what is going on guys coming at you live with some palm fishing heading out to a pond we got four rods i got a frog i got a spinner bait i got a jig and i got a uh, texas rig flipping bait so we're gonna give it a shot we got a couple hours we're gonna see what happens on the pond not really sure what to expect never been in this place before so new pond four rods four baits let's go here we go first off you gotta have right here evening you get some gomi juice or gomi goby just freaking get wired. You get fired up out here. Let's get a little scan action of what we got our pond wise. Let's get a little bit of a uh, see what we're working with. Looks like all natural bank. Okay, all natural. So looks like we can get down in there and flip and throw some spinner baits. We're gonna go down this little uh looks like an overflow always a good place to start water is crystal clear I mean crystal so we're gonna slip down to this little little uh, ravine here see what's going on let's start out with some natural natural black uh, or natural bluegill actually and we'll go with the frog we'll try that Let's give this a go. See what happens here. Our uh, bluegill's already hitting. Bluegill's already out there hitting. It's so so clear. Just a natural depression in the body of water. The old bass are hitting. They're not shy of the old swim jig. It's two hits, small bass. I've already pulled that thing off. Let's see what makes these fish, see what makes these fish go. Got a lot of bank to fish. I'm gonna guess down there, down there is gonna be the deeper end. So we'll work our way there. We just start out the little ditch here, just to give it a shot. So we got a little bit in the corners down here. As you can see, right through here, we got some lily pads, perfect for a topwater frog. Throwing that frog on 50 pound braid, so typically the dam side of a lake is the deepest, or one of the deepest stretches. So we're gonna sit right here. We're gonna rip some uh, cast right along these, right along these lily pads, and let's see what happens. Pads are, th those lily pads are thick. Try to get right down the edge here. Oh, let's tear up the babies. Where's Mama? Said one, pop it. Big battery makes a huge 
Mm hmm the pads look thick so what we're gonna do we're gonna go in here right here thick lily pads trocar that's a t1 uh, i think it's a 140 a little uh three eighths ounce let's flip let's flip right in there Goal here today, hammer into a four or five pound summertime bass. There's one right there. Just working that. We stuck that dude. We're sitting down there, now we just need him to be really, really big. I mean, I could literally hook him through the back and then just put him in there probably for, for bait. Again, using a bobber stop, pit boss, just old pumpkin. I think that's 3 8 ounce. It's T140. We got a little bit of a little willow right here. We got a little bit of pads. We got some shade. You know what that's gonna call for. All natural swim jig. Nothing better. This is gonna be a big fish here. This has big bass written all over it. Staying pretty weedless in these pads. Little bass just hit it. Just watch him swipe at it. This water's so clear you can watch the fish come up and just hit your hit your lure and they're just not big. They're they are all just small fish. I mean we are working with 10 inch bass. If I had a wacky rig or something. I think I'd be able to actually land half these fish. I think a 3 8 ounce jig is just too big for them. Boys and girls, this is a really, really bad film. Bad episode. Absolutely not catching good fish. Period. I mean, these are just, this is straight horrendous. We're going to have to figure it out. We're going to go down the bank here, get in this corner, give it a crack, try to get a cast, cast down the edge over here. Clear and shallow. <clears throat> Let's go with the most subtle presentation. Swim jig. What I feel a big bass will eat. Put it in front of him. I mean, this is it right here. Let's see what he does. Let's see how big this guy is. I mean, right there. Another giant. I mean, that dude is the size of my hand. Are you kidding me? This one actually might be a bigger one. He might be 11 inches. That was a good cast. I literally hooked him barely. Look, they're eating grass. Must be a must be a 
I mean, look at that thing. I caught bluegills bigger than him. This is a, this is going to turn into a episode of just giant fish. Just burn the old swim jig up top. One just hit it right on the throw. Oh, hit it again. He missed it. I mean, I'm working with hogs here, guys. Absolute H A W G S hogs. I tell you, hit it again. You set the hook, the fish goes for a ride. I mean, look at this. What a hog. Right through the eye, too. Right through his eye socket. Ouch. Get that out. Let's see here. Swim jig, three inches long, bass, six. Funny how I'm sitting 20 yards from Cliff and I can cast farther than his cast. Oh, this one's got some weight behind him. Oh man, this dude has to be, I mean, he has to be the biggest one of the day. This might be the biggest one of the day, boys and girls. I mean, golly, he might weigh in at a whopping five ounces. There you go. When you come up making them famous, we made you famous. Let's go down there. I see the fish. I see them. I see them. They're gonna bite. They're biting right now. Watch him hammer it. Look at that. That's sight fishing at its finest right there, boys and girls. Let him pick it up. Couldn't really give him a good hard hook set because uh, it is a giant and all. Like I said, once again, we're talking about a bait that is half the size of the fish. And I'm not throwing a nine inch trout. Let's just put it that way. Got to him by the fountain. Area to water. Let's see what's up. Oh, giant! This one actually is pretty decent. I think he's. A, I think he might go six inches. Six inches. Oh man. <sighs> you know. Fish long enough and you weed through, uh, well, we're just weeding through a lot of little ones. Let's don't kid anybody. There's no big ones in here. Caught squat. Sun's about down. We're going for a change. Peace to this lake. All right, boys and girls. Here's what's happening. New little pond, real quick before it gets dark. Got a culvert right here. We're gonna make something happen. We're gonna catch something over. Something over six inches. There's the one. I missed it. Water stained here.
Did you have a good one on? Got one biting right here. There he goes. There we go. Hog. There we go. This is why we came here. Right there. That's why we came here. <laughs> Catch bigger bass than your six incher. So there you go. Nice little fatty. About, ah. Uh, no. Just a good solid two pound fish. There you go. Nice fish. That's why we drove over here. Little established pond, a little established uh, retention pond. Fishing culverts into the night. You know what? He's munching on crawl daddies. What's up? It's a good one. Nice fish. Uh, you can go in my truck. I got I got a scale in there. Inside my truck, inside that little flambo. Nice fish. Looks like Cliff hammered a good one. He takes me to the small fish pond. In my truck. Don't kill that fish. He's an ancient one. It's in the box. Let me call him real quick. Let's call him. We got. Are you just, are you just, you, it's in that, it's in that flambo box. You just carrying a bass around? Oh, yeah, where is it? It's in the flambo box in the little black velvet, uh, yeah, little. walking around like a retard with the thing in my hand. Uh, you look like he's keeping a bass. I'm not keeping the damn thing, I just want to weigh his ass. Yeah, well hurry up, don't kill him. How do you, uh. Get him back in the water. Turn it on, clip it on his mouth. I'd get him in the water though. Quick, don't kill him. I don't like killing bass. It's not worth right, it. See ya. That's it. Another one, little guy. Little one. Messing my, my menace up. All right, guys. So uh, we're going to close this thing up in the garage here. Um, actually, going to that second pond um, actually made the, uh, made the day. That first one was uh, was a struggle bus, to say the least. It was uh, nothing but six inch bass in there. So, going to that older retention pond, it's an older neighborhood uh, in the area. That actually worked out really well. Got a, it was a little dirty, uh, murky, but we got on just getting on culverts. So, like I said, culverts uh, usually are a good place to start when you get in these featureless uh, places. They usually have some type of depression, or they'll have a lot of riprap around them. So, um, you got structure or some type of cover. Uh, they can relate to and it'll hold more bass hold more bait fish hold more bass 
what we uh, got on today with, I'll kind of show you the setup, just go through real quick. I, I had four rods, obviously I showed in the very beginning, but we actually just dialed it right in, just throwing a swim jig. Uh, works really well here in Indiana, so let me just show you what's going on there. All right, for the setup, for the setup here, had a Strike King. Uh, this, is a, this is a Hackney Floral Flipping uh, jig. So you can see it's beat up. It is, it is all banged up off the rocks. But have that, have that paired up on a, um, so I have that jig. Let me get this focused in on here. Get that focused here. So it's beat up. Throw in a Menace. Uh, this is a Blue Crawl uh, Color Menace as a trailer. Great swim action. Uh, this particular head, why I like these, they're pretty much all purpose. You get a good, if I get that to focus, you get a good, um, good all around jig that can skip really well comes through the grass decent it's horizontal line tie uh, but works really really well um, paired up that blue crawl rod wise this is the Dobbins champion extreme got the uh, Tatula 8 to 1 gear ratio um, reel all paired up on it so yeah this is a 745 if you can see that thing upside down this is the uh, with the full full cork handle. So, like I said, this is a setup 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Uh, worked really well today. Was able to get bites. Um, you know, we're we're in the uh, dog days of summer. Falls right around the corner. Uh, we're we're a few cool weekends away for these fish to start uh, getting a little more aggressive and uh, feeding up a little more. But um, utilizing just stuff that you know probably they're not seeing every day at these retention ponds I don't get out and fish them a lot but when I do I'm gonna throw something that I know I have confidence in and probably somebody's not throwing so I would stick with a swim jig didn't have a wacky rig set up but uh, that'd be another good choice is throwing a wacky rig um, you can pretty much catch anything in a pond but uh, yeah so look for uh, your older neighborhoods uh, get out there uh, if you have to beat the banks up get out there and do it uh, the fish are still out there uh, on the shoreline you can catch them um, that you don't have to be thrown out in 20 foot of water or anything of that nature around here um, so you can catch some good fish and uh, obviously if you have a boat get out there get in your boat just get out and go fishing I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's episode uh, it was kind of uh, all over the place but hey we ended up with with catching a fish that was decent uh, you know I wouldn't say it was world-class but it was decent at that so good time hope you guys enjoy the video if you do uh, hit the thumbs up, um, like it, share it, and uh, I'll keep bringing some more to you guys. So have fun, God bless, and till the next time, peace.